Welcome back everyone to another Company of Heroes 2 replay cast and this time we're gonna have a 2v2- oh boy that's loud. Okay, should be enough. Um, just slightly lowering it. <clears throat> it was sent in by I believe Drino019 and he asked me to help out. So yeah, gonna be following mostly him. His friend is gonna be Fian, both of them playing as the USF and their opponents are Major Pain OKW and Big Beer Wehrmacht. So it's Lear No, of course, the map. Lovely little map. I mean, uh, everybody knows that this is a great map. <laughs> There's a lot of buildings in the center. Need to be very careful. Mm. Oh, damn. Some aggressive stuff coming out already <laughs> from everybody. Okay, but you lost. Sure. Um. Yeah, Major Payne is going to be bringing in his Storm Pioneers. He knows that the center is like the key. And as you can see, Fian is very scared. Uh, up north, there's obviously that very, very big open field. And, oh, these riflemen are going to absolutely massacre these Storm Pioneers. But the Storm Pioneers managed to get close. And they're going to inflict some damage back at least. But the riflemen managed to get the jump on them and get into heavy cover first. So that was a pretty good play for Drinu. Drinu's also got his rear echelon troops set up in the building over here, which is going to allow him to project some power over the fuel point. However, his um, biggest priority right now is going to be to get rid of this MG42, because otherwise the MG42 is eventually going to destroy his Sturm, or not his Sturm Pioneers, his rear echelon troops. His riflemen can't really do too much about what is going on because of these buildings, just kind of providing cover for the German troops. That's allowing them to stick in the fight a lot longer than they normally would be. And as you can see, the rear echelons have to retreat. But there's a second rifleman squad coming through and also a mortar being built right now by Drennan, which is, in my opinion, the correct option right now. He does not want to get his, uh, get his units just kind of stopped by the garrisons. And if he can take them out with the mortar, he's going to be in a good spot overall. His friend over here, Fian, is doing quite good up in the north. He's managed to push up and force back a little bit of the forces from the OKW. Major Pain does have a cube wagon, however, and he's using that to capture up the north VP. Getting flanked by these Rechlans isn't going to be that much of a worry for the cube wagon, but yeah, these folks grenadiers are not going to be doing that well against these riflemen at medium to long ranges even. However, the border is now set up in the south and so the machine gun is going to be taking fire right now that a one millimeter is going to be quite good and right now also the grand years are forced away from the tiny building up here because there's only like one window that uh, they were able to shoot out of so the riflemen used to um used to uh being outgunned by the grand years at medium to long ranges we're just able to get in close range and just out firepower them five rifles to one at the same time, these two MGs, there's a second MG, are going to be probably destroyed by the mortar team. Another mortar team has been built by Drenu, and he has picked the uh, Heavy Cavalry Company. So, why did he retreat that Rifleman squad? I have no idea. I think it was a misclick. It was definitely a bad idea to retreat, because he could have just kept them kept them over here and allowed them to spot the MGs, allowing the mortars to deal massive damage. And then once the mortars were dealt, were dealt with, or not the mortars the mgs were dealt with by the mortars he could have used these riflemen to get some map control up here but yeah that did not work out and somehow the okw seems to have won the engagement up here in the north possibly through the help of these stern pioneers and of course the cube wagon doing quite well getting two kills and almost bed one and manages to capture or at least neutralize that fuel point so that is all pretty okay for um for the axis they do have a little bit of a comeback coming through on the north. The south is pretty much uncontested by both sides, which is, of course, not the best thing. But uh, the, both sides are just so very, oh damn, so very uh, just concentrated on their own battles in the center and the north that they can't really do too much about that. Right now, that MG42 um, and 42 armor piercing rounds. Yeah, that's just doing so much damage. It managed to completely annihilate the Rifleman squad. Almost destroyed the mortars also. Almost destroyed the second Rifleman squad. And yeah, it, they still managed to retreat with basically no HP, but their experience intact. So that is going to be a huge, huge pain in the rear for Drenu. He's going to find some way to uh, you know, deal with the MG. Otherwise, he is going to have a lot of problems coming through for him. 
Right now in the north, we have a captain play for Fian. I mean, the captain is going to be quite okay at dealing with the cube wang and with the bazooka. And also, he's going for a, a support gun, which is an interesting choice for the Americans at this kind of stage in the game. I would have felt like um, he could have, you know, gone for something else. But, oh well. Uh, we have a nice double rifleman from the truck, managing to basically destroy every German unit in their path, almost wiping out that Sturmpau. Very, very close to wiping them out. But, uh, ooh. Sprint. Sprint used from Rifle Company um, to get an 80 grenade off on the Kubuangan. Oh well, Kubuangan is dead. Uh, well, kind of. I don't know. Really now? Once the sprint is over, they get exhausted. Then why would you use the sprint for 15... Damn, that is very underpowered, actually. <laughs> that needs a buff. <laughs> it's one of the five abilities for a rifle company, and it's pretty bad. Anyway, uh, right now, the mortars over here from Drunu are not in the best way, because they now finally have a counter. They have both the mortar and two mortar half-tracks. Two of them. Uh, but the first one is in trouble. Is the captain coming? No, he's not going with the bazooka. Because he does not have enough munitions. That's sad. Uh, that's very, very sad. And basically that allows the mortar half tracks to escape, but two mortar half tracks is going to be very strong against the two normal mortars because of course these guys are just uh, just squishy infantry manning the mortars, whereas the mortar half tracks are vehicles, so they're not going to take as much damage as uh, they're going to be able to dish out to the mortar crews. However, the problem is these mortar half tracks are 40 fuel apiece, so that is 80 fuel that Big Beer has just spent on mortar half tracks, which means he does not even have battle phase one. Uh, so he's stuck with the infantry company right now, and he's going to be stuck with the infantry company for a while because he's also going to have to upgrade battle phase one and then build uh, build the leicht mechanized company. So right now, this is allowing his opponent, uh, Fien and Drinu, to get the checking advantage, even though the Germans have the resource advantage. So this is pretty bad. And right now, the north is being completely overrun by German forces, which is also going to increase the German resource advantage. But that is not going to change the fact that uh, Big Beer just kind of wasted an opportunity to tick ahead of his opponents and get himself something like a flame half-track or a uh, scout car, just to deal with this uh, very, very pesky ambulance position and the mortars. That would have been very good. But unfortunately, this is not going to be. Uh, in the south, we have a little bit of a, you know, <laughs> toothpick fight between the Rioshlan troops and the uh, Pioneer Squad. The Pioneer Squad is getting a flamethrower and they're getting in the building, which is going to be... <coughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> going to be pretty hard to deal with for our allies. And, ooh, damn. Anti-Tank Gun also in trouble. Anti-Tank Gun is a good pick. Um, smart purchase for Drinu. The problem is, his opponent wasn't playing smartly, so <laughs> the anti-tank gun isn't going to be used for anything for a long, long time. However, Major Pain, <clears throat> Major Pain may have some vehicles. He does have the battle headquarters right now up. Uh, may want to go with a flak half but most likely just waiting for the Schwerer Panzer headquarters. At this point, he's got 125 fuel in the bank, and he is with the Breakthrough Doctrine, so that means that he's looking for the late game. At this point, it seems pretty likely that he's going to go for a Schwerer Panzer quarters and trying to go for either a Panzer 4 or a Panzer 4. A Panzer 4 would be very good right now. And yeah, there it goes. So there's a Stuart on the field, and because of the sort of tardiness of the Germans and teching up, this is the only vehicle on the field, and the Germans haven't even gone for a Kenwerfers. This is because Major Pain has just been uh, bled so thoroughly by the Riflemen play by Fian. I mean, uh, Fian is losing to him, but... He's been able to at least cause a lot of casualties to the OKW in the process, which which means that there's no uh, Rakenwerfer. Right now, he's got 290 manpower. He should definitely go for a Rakenwerfer right now. As soon as you see a steward, you just go click to your click your HQ and you click R. You click R, you get Rakenwerfers. In the south, finally, the mortars from Drenu are starting to pay off, and he's pushing through, but he's gonna be eventually pinned down by a crossfire of MGs. There's three machine guns opposing him, so quite a lot of MGs. Right now, his um, his captain is in very, very bad uh, is in very bad position in dire straits, with the building almost falling down. He manages to see that and escape certain death and doom. However, the enemy mortars plus the MGs are just kind of uh, pinning him down onto a cauldron of fire that he wants to get out of desperately. Right now, as you can see, his forces are taking casualties. He has to run away. 
still got his ambulance, but he does not have a major. So right now, he really uh, doesn't have any ways of putting up a forward retreat point. He's also basically behind the resources because he's building a steward at this point. I feel like it's an okay move. It's going to help him out uh, deal with the mortar half-tracks definitely with the uh, shell shock ability. It's going to stun up the mortar half-tracks and allow the steward to do quite a lot of damage to them. And it's also going to be quite useful against the MGs in the buildings. The steward is quite okay at dealing with infantry that's hiding out in buildings. But the problem is his, his ally also has a steward. So it's not like it's going to give the Americans any capabilities that they right now miss. They've already got their light vehicle around. This Reformant Squad is going to have to retreat. They've already got their light vehicle. So perhaps it would be a better choice, considering that Drinu is the heavy cavalry company, to go with the tier 4. Because this would give them quite a heavy boost in terms of CP. Is generally upgrading tiers is one of the best ways to do that. And so it would allow him to go with, for example, a couple of Shermans while he waits for the M26 Pershing heavy tank. Or something like it. Uh, this Storm Pioneer squad is going to go down. Finally, our Kenneth River has been purchased by Major Payne, and that's going to, of course, counter the Stuart quite heavily if the Stuart stays in its line of fire, but it does not. The Stuart runs away and is going to get some repairs while the Allied Infantry cleans up the rest of the German Grenadiers. In the south, or, well, rather center, the Stuart from Drenu is doing quite well. Unfortunately, he's taken fire from these uh, incendiary armor piercing rounds by Big Beer. Uh, they're not gonna really be able to do all that much against the steward, but they're still gonna just plink away at it and as you can see slowly but surely damage it. At this point, however, this Veteran C2 MG42 should prioritize its own safety over, you know, damaging the steward a little bit. It almost goes down and it's fed free, so getting the kill on this guy would be the most important thing to do right now for the allies, but unfortunately the steward has, uh, for some reason, the... Sh wait, what? He's shooting the infantry. I guess he's just manually clicking? Still, I have no idea why he's... Oh no, wait, what is this? Hold fire? He was definitely not holding fire right now. He might be able to wipe out that Grenadier squad. Aw, oh, damn it. That is... That is very unfortunate. I mean, he, he probably should have chased that Grenadier squad. Of course, he does not know that that Grenadier is the only anti-tank... Well, sort of anti-tank, of course, with the Panzerfaust, available to Big Beer. Big Beer definitely needs to go for a pack. He still has not um, built any tiers. He's upgraded Battle Phase 1, and he's now upgrading Battle Phase 2, but he has not built any of the buildings. So he's definitely throwing his own lead very greatly. I mean, he's still able to sort of hold over the center fuel thanks to his MGs and mortars. But just imagine if, you know, he had also some very high tier units to back it up he would be in a much better position. So right now, his sort of negligence is definitely hurting the Germans. And right now, a nice white phosphorus from Fian is going to force away this MG42, allow these riflemen to at least get some get some breathing space. Of course, the second MG is doing quite well. Up north, yeah, a bit of a flanking maneuver from these Volksrenders takes out the anti tank gun, but they're in a bad situation right now. They're taking fire from the Stuart and they are having to escape. Right now, it seems like the Stuart's only problem is this Rakenver for 43 anti tank gun. Uh, right now, he needs to deal with that in some way. The best way would be to f kind of find it and use the pack howitzer on it, but of course, that's where the Rakenver comes to be a problem because of the stealth. So he's going to need to find some way to avoid the stealth find his opponent, scout him out, and then take him out mercilessly. At this point, the mortars from uh, from Drino, as you can see, they're doing quite well, but they're taking fire from the two mortar half-tracks, so they're going to have to escape, barely avoiding getting wiped. Let's see if the next shell does. No, it does not wipe them. So that's pretty okay. And the Vet-Free MG is back, and it's full HP. At this point, however, this captain once again gets into a very, very dangerously... Uh, dangerously low HP building. So th these buildings are all collapsing in. As you can see, it was only a matter of time before that happened. The captain will be kind of replaced by a ranger squad in terms of anti-infantry. 
but oh finally we find the mortar half tracks being attacked by the steward this is exactly what i thought the steward should have done earlier at this point however this is the worst time because these units over here are not coming into support if these units and the steward were to right now attack the german concentration of forces in the north it would be very bad for them because the rakenwerfer is turned out is turned away to face the other steward their steward however gets stuck on the wreckage of one of these mortar half tracks and so it's going to be an easy target for the rakenwerfer interestingly enough the American troops are pushing through the center. The steward manages to take out the second mortar half track. The first steward manages to escape from the gridlock of that mortar half track wreckage and escape south. However, for some reason, he's still on, on hold fire and prioritized vehicles, despite the fact that there really aren't any vehicles left and he needs to be shooting at infantry. Otherwise, it's going pretty well for the Allies. This MG42 almost goes down. Maybe an MG44, I have no idea. And the American infantry assault is making progress. However, some casualties are coming through from those Panzer Fusiliers and Volksgrandiers. Nice grenade gonna deal some extra damage to these riflemen. But overall, it seems like the Allied offensive is going to succeed up here in the north. Thanks to that nice flanking maneuver from the Stuart. However, for some reason, Fian isn't really pushing this across. I mean, needs to get in close and deal with these uh, Volksgrandiers down and dirty. Just like normally and yeah finally the pack avatar gets a good shot and forces away the folks this is going to open up the northern fuel point for american capture and right now the americans desperately need some fuel they have been starved of both of these resources uh for basically the entire duration of the game and right now we do have a schwer panzer headquarters coming through for major pain so it's going to be very important for uh the allies to get some fuel of their own get some vehicles out because they have expended quite a lot of resources on these stewards 70 fuel apiece is a lot when you only have 13 of, in, uh, of fuel income that is seven minutes worth <clears throat> so what, what would be very important right now for the allies is to get some fuel and once they get some fuel they can start to challenge the germans in the field of late, late game armor another mortar another two mortar half tracks are purchased by big beer so that is once again 80 fuel being spent on you know mortars that could have just been could have just been purchased in the infantry company there goes the veterancy free mg finally uh once again making the mistake of heading into a building with low hp when there's a lot of mortars on the enemy team a lot of artillery it, uh, this is actually quite puzzling from both sides they really need to be very careful about where they put their units and garrisons because units and garrisons are not invincible they will take damage, they will take a lot of damage from mortars, and you need to be very, very careful about how the state of the building looks like. Because if it's low, you may not have early warning of the fact that your squad is about to get wiped. Because normally, you just look at your top right of the screen, you'd see your units in trouble. Like for example, right now, you just click on that, you get to there, you see what's wrong, you retreat. Which is exactly what Fian just did with that rifleman squad. Ah, oh, these mortar half tracks are gonna die. Once again, Drenu Stewart gonna go on the hunt, and once again, he gets stuck by the wreckage. That is so very unfortunate, to be completely honest. This kind of bug really needs to get fixed. Wait, what happened? An infantry unit got wiped out. Probably a rifleman squad. Right now, the Allies need to be very careful about their infantry force. with a very strong infantry force for Fian, and a very weak one for Drenu, but they need to be able to preserve both of these forces for the later stages of the game. This is, of course, Lierno, so there's a lot of open field, a lot of opportunities for infantry to bleed. And so, as much manpower can be conserved as possible, then that manpower should be conserved. Uh, wait. Ah, S minefield. Interesting. Well, uh, at least somebody's making use of mines. Um, one thing that Drenu could be doing right now, he's got 240 manpower and he is with the Heavy Cavalry Company, so he does have Rifleman defensive structures which allows him to build mines. Uh, he should definitely place some mines, especially now that he's got his Rifleman down south. I mean, they're going to be forced away by this horde of pioneers, but if they weren't, I think that they're going to die. Retreating for the minefield, yep. So at this point, he needs to build a Rifleman squad. Uh, both for the utility of the mines and the um, and sand grenades, and also because they're just your main mainline infantry as the Americans. You want to have at least one or two rifleman squads up at all times so that you can just have a very versatile unit that can come around, cap, get some bars, get some bazookas, and to just be very, very versatile. Can be useful for about anything. 
And if you can get them vetted up, they're going to be able to at least face off against better German infantry later on. Major Payne does have 314 fuel. If I was him, I would go with a King Tiger and not a Jagdtiger. I feel like at this point he's going to wait for the Jagdtiger because it looks like he's focusing heavily on beefing up his infantry force to prepare for that occasion. And then later on, he's going to want the Jagdtiger to deal with, for example, Jacksons and Shermans. But he's facing off against 2USF, which is pretty much the most mobile uh, mobile faction when it comes to armor, unless you're facing off against uh, Hammer Tactics Brits. But considering that just the amount of m emphasis that the Americans place on mobility, the Octiger really isn't what you want to do, especially on Lear No, with the South being South and Center being completely unavailable to the Octiger. The Octiger is only useful in the North. So it's not going to be really all that much of a game-changing weapon, whereas the King Tiger would be able to just deal with the enemy infantry uh, by plowing through them with that 88mm, and so it would be a game-changer, most definitely. And it would be worth, sometimes, would be worth waiting for a long, long time and getting your fuel up. Uh, what tells me that he's going for the Act Eager is also the fact that he has not uh, set up his mechanized regiment headquarters anywhere on the map. So that really just means that he's the only reason for saving his fuel would be a big... Jagdtiger, uh, because that does not require any buildings. At this point, this Panzer IV is in trouble. If the Stuart can get some shell shocks on him and get the stuns, or maybe even a um, point blank engine shot, as he does, th the engine is now damaged and the anti tank gun can get behind. Oh, very nice. The Stuart somehow manages to get a main gun destroyed crit on the Panzer IV, so now even the Stuart is going to be able to deal with that. Um, German medium tank at this point. Yeah, the anti tank gun is going to be switched around and the end of that Panzer IV is going to come through very, very quickly. Very good play by Drunu. I had not even noticed that that Panzer IV was around. That, of course, means that Big Beer has gone for support armor core. Panzer IV was a good choice because he needed the extra versatility of the Panzer IV to deal with both the light vehicles and the infantry. But he definitely misused it. I mean, he does not have the most infantry around. Uh, so perhaps it would have been better for him to just kind of uh, move his Panzer IV north and use it to support his ally. Because right now, major pain uh, isn't major pain. I mean, completely an intentional pun right over there. But yeah, because he's losing his infantry forces, he's losing his support weapons, and his vehicles don't exist because he's waiting for the Yachtiger. Don't ever do this. Just... Waiting for the Yacht Tiger and at the expense of everything else is a bad idea. You may want to wait for the KT, even that is kind of risky sometimes. But waiting for the Yacht Tiger is never worth it and never pays off. And it's allowing these two stewards to just command the battlefield, even though, I mean, they've been around since like minute 8. Uh, and it's minute 22. At this, by this point, the Germans should have found some kind of counter to these stewards. Uh, either Raken Riffers, as uh, Major Payne has been doing, but he hasn't really been using them as effectively as he could have been because he's facing an opponent with a pack howitzer. So that is, uh, of course, very, very detrimental to your usage of support weapons because the pack howitzer can just kind of bombard them every time they set up. And his opponent also has a very, very massive infantry advantage. So he should have found some way to deal with the enemy infantry advantage first. And one good way to do that might have been to go with a Panzer IV as quickly as possible, rather than wait for the Atiyar. He would have been able to go with a Panzer IV a long, long time ago. Uh, Big Beer, on his part, did not go for the support, or, sorry, Leicht Mechanized Company. The Leicht Mechanized Company is pretty much the most important building for the Wehrmacht, when you get to the mid-game, because it allows you to go with packs. Packs are very important. And also half-tracks for uh, the all-important flame half-track purchase, uh, just to deal with enemy support weapons and, again, infantry. So, the mid-game was definitely misplayed by the Germans. They tried to hunker down on their existing sort of fortresses of the center and the north fuel, um, north fuel and VPs. But... It didn't really work out for them because the allies were just kind of one step ahead of them and just kind of forced through with the infantry game and they were able to come back on the field. However, it's not all over yet. Uh, there is another Panzer IV coming through for Big Beer. Major Payne does not have anything up right now, but he may soon. This Jagdtiger is definitely going to, I mean, scare away the Stuarts, but what else is going to do? I don't really know. The Pershing... 
is a possibility, but right now Drenu is going for a sh uh, Sherman. I feel like with 13 CPs being achieved, going for the Sherman is just a waste of resources. He should wait for the Pershing. The Pershing can basically do the same uh, roles as the Sherman. There we go, nice usage of these Rangers, by the way. Getting the weaker Rangers, the ones that are not veteran, uh, to just kind of draw fire in and then flank with the others. Very good play. Uh, yeah, it just kind of seems like, oh, this Stuart is gonna die. I'm predicting this, this Stuart is gonna die by the end of this. Yeah, definitely needs to escape. Well, he's lucky that the Rakenwerfers were back. Uh, he's still going to die. He's trying to... I do not know what. Okay. Well, Rangers getting more kills. Definitely uh, proving their worth with that glorious uh, Thompson times 4 And the Sherman is actually going to be able to chase through and destroy the Panzer IV. So that is, I would say, a good trade. I mean... It's not the best trade ever, but it's an okay trade, especially considering that the Germans are taking heavy casualties on their infantry. Right now, the sort of uh, back lines of Fian, containing the pack howitzer, uh, are going to be able to be defended by the MG-34 and the Stuart. So you should probably, uh, you should probably be able to repel this assault. I mean, even inflicting heavy casualties on these Panzer Fusiliers, almost wiping out one of the squads. Almost wiping out the second squad with a rifle grenade from the Briachlan troops in the fighting position. Right now, it just kind of seems like, despite a few difficulties, the Americans are in an okay spot. Right now, the yeah, the Rangers trying to come across. They're going to be forced away by the Schwer Panzer. Unfortunately, they did not take the MG-42 heavy machine gun, which in my opinion would have been a very good choice. But the flank succeeds in at least forcing away this MG-42 and the Rakenwerfer. MG, which was... A no, it was not recovered. The MG-34 is still in the hands of the Americans down here, which is very good. Drenu is uh, just kind of uh, floating manpower, and that's bad. He needs to go with some riflemen at this point, at least a couple of squads, so that he can exert more control over the south and center, and place down a lot more mines, and, of course, upgrade them with bars and bazookas, so that they're more useful against enemy medium vehicles and infantry. Otherwise, however, uh, his main priority should be to go for the Pershing Heavy Tank, because the Pershing Heavy Tank uh, should be should be basically enough to deal with any major threats that the Germans might want to might want to push out. I mean, if the Tiger comes through, and you know, Drenu and Fian should know that the Tiger is coming because of the mortar half tracks. Usually, whenever somebody is using the mortar half tracks, it is spearhead dock front. Uh, but other than that, there's really nothing all that dangerous that the Germans could be going for. I mean, Panthers, there's easy 8s on the field, and Major Payne has had a sure Panzer quarters for quite a long time, and he hasn't gone for Panthers. So clearly, that's what he, not what he's going for. The Yacht Tiger, which of course should be, you know, not a surprise due to the Panzer Fusiliers that are showing up. The Octiker isn't going to really be all that useful when there's Stuarts around because the Stuarts can very easily get behind it and use the point blank engine shot to deal a damaged engine. And once the engine is damaged, then the Easy 8s and of course the Pershing can flank around as well and deal with it. So overall, the Germans are just kind of digging themselves into this pit where they're not going to be all that, all that prepared for what the Allies should go for. Now that is. Aw, oh, damn. That was unfortunate. That was almost a good flank from these Rangers, but there's the Stuart coming through. So the Stuart is going to be able to deal with that uh, MG42 quite easily. Still, uh, what's kind of interesting is the fact that, I mean, if Drenu goes for a Pershing, I just don't see the Allies losing. If Fian continues to spam Easy 8s, I just don't see the Allies losing. It all hinges on the fact that if they are able to get some good flanks off of those units, they're going to be in a good shape. That is basically all it rests, rests upon. If they continue doing this kind of stuff, which is right now working because of the lack of anti-tank defenses over here, but if they continue to do these frontal attacks, it's not going to work out well in their favors. But if they get some flanks off, there's a lot of flanking opportunities in Lierno on both sides of the map because of these forests that normally uh, are basically unoccupied then the Allies are going to be in a great, great position to use the mobility of their units to get advantage. Big Beer is going to continue spamming Panzer IVs, and that's not good. He's lost his last two Panzer IVs, and he has the Tiger available. 
So why would he continue spamming Panzer IVs? I have no idea. He could just wait for the Tiger and get a more survivable unit. It's clear that he's been having problems keeping his tanks alive. So going with the Tiger is going to be good because, of course, if he can get a bigger tank with more armor, maybe he's going to be able to make it survive a little bit longer and uh, deal more damage to the enemy forces that way. Wait. Hold on. Did he switch around the vehicle crew from the steward to the EZ-8? I think so. That is a that is a very smart move. Because I see that the steward is basically, like, without experience. And I'm almost 100% sure he did not lose a steward and build another one. Let's see. Yeah, he has not lost a steward. So he's actually switched around the crew. That's actually a neat move, because the crew of the steward that had been accu accumulating veterancy for all that time, uh, was switched around to the EZ-8, which is of course going to be strong because the EZ-8 is a much, much more useful unit in the late game than the Steward. So that is going to be quite good. Unfortunately, well, actually, no, these these abilities aren't Vet one. Okay, good. Yeah, right now the Germans are just kind of trying to push through, but this nice usage of fighting positions from Fien, plus of course the fact that he was able to steal that MG plus the pack howitzers are making it very hard for these Panzer Fusiliers to have a good impact. Uh, the fighting positions are taken far from the Rakenwerfers and one of them goes down, but it's only 150 manpower, and right now the pack howitzers are going to be able to basically destroy these Rakenwerfers. Once those are down, the stewards and vehicles can come in and continue to inflict a huge bleed on Major Pain. He still has not been able to go with the Yachty gear. He's got 600 uh, fuel, so... He's basically he basically would have had enough for two Yachtigers, but he would oh this Panzer four is in trouble. Taking fire from a Jackson. So he's gone for a Jackson instead of an M26. That's pretty bad. Taking fire from a Jackson and Jackson is gonna try to chase that is definitely not a good idea. You don't ever chase with Jacksons. He probably is gonna be able to take out the Panzer IV, but the Schwer Panzer quarters is able to penetrate the Jackson quite easily, especially once it shows its rear armor like this. Uh, are there any Grenadiers around? Yes, there is a Grenadier squad over here, so the Jackson needs to be a very afraid, and the Jackson takes damage from both the um, Rakenwerfer and the Schwer Panzer, and is abandoned. So this is a huge boon for the Axis, who was playing basically to lose. Yeah, they were playing to lose in some way up until now, but now they're gonna have two major tank destroyers, although Major Pain is still just kind of suiciding his infantry and frontal bonsai charges on the American Line of Doom. And this is still bleeding him out and basically making it impossible for him to go with the Yacht here. The only thing that's saving him is the fact that these American tanks are not going for flanking maneuvers. There goes the Veterans Free EZ-8, which is a huge blow to Fien. But Fien is going to be able to, if he um, cancels the production of this MG, go with another EZ-8. And in the south and center right now, we see that Adrinu is just kind of running rampant. Um, he may have learned his lesson and now want to go for the Pershing. He still needs to use some of his manpower though. He needs to um, needs to go with a couple of those rifleman squads because it's going to allow him to just have such a better map control. His opponent is fixated on going with a lot of MGs. So uh, he's going to be basically vulnerable and not be able to uh, cap points all that quickly retaking map control from the enemy. It's not going to be within his possibilities. Uh, I mean, he does have free Grandier squads now, but they're all veterans he's zero. So against Rangers, against some uh, upgraded riflemen, they're going to stand no chance. And as you can see, these Rangers, point proven, they're going to be able to massacre these um, Grandiers even under the influence of that Panzer IV. Yep, absolutely, completely demolished. That was great usage of the Rangers. And right now, Fien is finally getting a little bit more confident and pushing up aggressively against his opponent. He basically knows that his opponent, I mean, has been bled out. I mean, uh, look at this. Even though free rifleman squads have been lost for Fien, he has built a lieutenant, which was a good choice, actually. Backtacking to the lieutenant only cost him 50 fuel and gave him a pretty good squad, replacing one of his lost riflemen and giving him uh, a free BAR and a free uh, Thompson. Also, it allows him to build the MG40, or er, not MG42, it's 50 cals. So the 50 cals are definitely going to allow him to improve his sort of defensive line that he is slowly but surely creeping forward, inch by inch and meter by meter. 
Um, not meter, meter by meter because he's USF, <laughs> so he does not know what meters are. But yeah, it's allowed him to do some good work on these Panzer Fusiliers, who despite being superior to his own infantry, just can't really do anything because they keep suicidally charging in the front of these MGs. So the front up there is slowly but surely creeping up. At this point, however, we have a bit of a problem for the Allies. The Jackson has been recruited, and another Jackson has been built by Drenu. No, go for the Pershing. You have the Pershing. You can go for the Pershing. The Pershing's good. I don't know, man. Going for the Pershing right now would be a better choice. Because the Pershing basically has uh, similar anti-tank capabilities to the Jackson. It's not as good as the Jackson, but it's got similar anti-tank capabilities. And uh, what's very, very good about it is that you can use the HVAP rounds, which is basically a double shot. You can shoot, use HVAP, and fire another. Uh, HVAP is like the special, special ability of the Pershing. You can use the HVAP and get a second shot off immediately without really needing to reload. Oh my god, these Rangers. Rangers are just such an awesome unit. Yep, they're going to be able to massacre the MG from the front and almost massacre the mortar as it escapes. Two Grenadier squads with MG42s may be a little bit too much for them to handle, even at close range. And Major Payne at this point quits. <sighs> his strategy revolved around getting a solid infantry corps and securing his northern side of the map. Uh, while he waited for the Octier, he failed to realize that with this kind of strategy, if he misused his Panzer Fusiliers and was, uh, you know, playing into the hands of the Americans, if he did that, then he would not have been able to go with the Octier because the Octier itself is very expensive when it comes to manpower. So he was just completely off phase. Like, what he needed to do, oh damn, that is very unfortunate. That might be the end of that vet free ranger squad. 27 gun salute for the per Oh! He's gonna die. The Pans 4 is gonna die to the to the Jackson, and actually the Ranger survives. Damn, that's interesting. Let's see. Oh no! The Jackson gets destroyed by the other Jackson, and the other Jackson survives the anti-tank gun. And the Stuart is the, uh, yeah, manages to destroy the Panzer IV. The Stuart may actually get the kill on the other Jackson as well. Look at how quick it is with the Veteran C3. It's only going to be two shots for the Jackson. One shot for the Jackson to take out the Stuart. Rip. That was almost amazing. <laughs> that was almost the most amazing Stuart play that that Stuart has ever seen. But yeah, unfortunately, the Jackson survives. And the AI. <laughs> actually manages to use the Jackson a lot better than the player was able to. Uh, AI is also having to deal with the Sherman EZ-8 coming through, but the Sherman EZ-8 just has way too much HP and better speed than the Jackson, so he manages to get in there and kill it. No, don't go for another Jackson, go for the Pershing! The Pershing is good against infantry as well as against vehicles. You need versatility right now, you don't need specialized units. Also, Drenu needs to go, for, again, with Riflemen. But overall, with the uh, quitting of Major Pain, I'm guessing that this is going to be the end of the round. I mean... Maybe the AI is going to be a little bit better than Major Pain in dealing with the infantry. Yeah, actually, considering the amount of spam of uh, support guns that they're going for, and finally a Panzer IV, at least something, coming through for uh, the Axis. I don't know. Maybe something is going to change in the north now that the AI is around. Still, uh, Fian should be able to at least uh, sort of hold this position. If not, just be outright able to completely annihilate these German support weapons uh, with their uh, with the pack howitzers, and then use the pack howitzers to destroy the Schwer Panzer quarters, as he's been doing, and then capture the Northern VP, the second one as well. But uh, in these last few uh, like 15, 20 minutes. We've had Drenu just kind of capturing and holding the Southern VP and the Central Field Point, which is, of course, uh, all that the Allies need right now to get superiority over the battlefield. And in terms of resources and VPs, the VP game is basically even, but it's going to end pretty soon if the Allies can get a triple cap, which would be, of course, quite good. And that Panzer Fort's going to die. Very good usage of that Veteran C3 Rifleman with the, of course, uh, anti-tank grenades gets a nice damage engine on the Panzer IV. Under the fire of the EZ-8s, this Panzer IV is likely to go down, although 
the support guns managed to take out the 57mm, and the Panzer IV is bouncing shots off an Easy 8, which is pretty absurd. While it itself is actually penetrating the Easy 8, so the Easy 8 is not having the best of days. It bounces another round. The Panzer IV also bounces at a time when it could have actually penned. And there goes the Panzer IV, but the Panzer IV out of control might get the last shot off on the Easy 8. It does and destroys the Easy 8 thanks to the out of control. RNG Jesus intervenes in the favor of the Germans. Finally, no, that's that's not a Pershing. I thought that we had a Pershing. It's just a third Ranger squad. Free Rangers is a little bit too much in a normal game, but at this point, considering what has been happening, Free Rangers isn't that bad. And finally, the Tiger. So finally, someone manages to get the thing that they've been waiting for the entire game, the big unit that may be uh, the instrument of revenge. But at this point, I just don't see it. I mean, the Tiger is going to be very good against the Rangers because the Rangers, being that expensive, are just going to be so vulnerable to getting wiped out by that 88mm. So they escape. They might still get wiped. Aw, oh, Tiger misses. Let's see if Tiger misses again. Tiger misses again. <laughs> and right now, the Jackson is going to be quite good against the Tiger. But one Jackson, actually two Jacksons against the Tiger, they bounce twice that is unfortunate they bounce three times that they bounce four times what the heck is this that is just so incredibly unlucky finally getting a penetration and the tiger goes a little bit too far and you know it's gonna get flanked one house too far gets flanked gets completely closed off and is gonna die. It might be able to take out the second Jackson as well. The second Jackson is taking some big, big damage. One more shot is gonna be enough to deal with it. It does go, go down and die. Uh, two Jacksons for a Tiger is a, normally a good trade for the Germans, but the Germans can't replace the Tiger, whereas the Jacksons weren't really any useful at this point for Drenu. Drenu needs to go for that Pershing. He's wasted like four Jacksons, I think. Yeah, four Jacksons. Uh, with that amount of resources, I think the Jackson is like 135, uh, 125. With that amount of resources, he would have had 500 extra fuel. That is 500 fuel plus, um, ooh, that's 200 plus 1,400 1, manpower and 500 fuel. That would have been two Pershings. And I feel like two Pershings would have been a lot more useful. But, oh well, uh, right now the Jagdpanzer IV is uh, not a good choice, but it's the AI, so... Not really anything to, not really anything to comment about. It's the AI. The AI will do what the AI will, and it's getting flanked by what? I have no idea. This, however, is a good choice. I like it more. Uh, still, I think the KT. Um, just quickly summing it up, I feel like the Germans, the OKW should have gone for a KT, and they should have been a lot more aware of the fact that they can flank around the forest around the big line of American machine guns and support guns. Another thing that the Allies, or that the Axis should have done is pay a lot more attention to the South because they just kind of allowed the Allies to keep at least that VP under their control the entirety of the game. Uh, thus making a VP victory for the Axis all but impossible. The Northern VP uh, was kind of secure all the time for the allies and this one was kind of secure all the time for the axis as is usually the case but because of the fact that the axis misused their resources just so incredibly hard and because of the fact that they were not really aware of any alternative opportunities for fighting rather than just kind of headbutting against the north and trying to defend in the south with you know of course uh, garrisoning the buildings with machine guns and mortars because they were unaware of any of those alternatives, well, they just kind of continued headbutting into something that more and more was not working, was not adequate. They should have changed tactics at some point, and well, they did not. So, you know, yeah, CPU is better than he was. Um, kind of, <laughs> to be completely honest. At least he's using his fuel. At least the CPU is using the fuel and not waiting for the Octiger. Still, uh, yeah, misuse of resources and bad tactics. Pretty much like the unholy 
unholy couple of Company of Heroes 2. Uh, really, really not a lot that the Germans could have done, considering that those two things were happening. Uh, the Allies, what could they have done differently? Well, definitely Drenu using resources uh, better, because, I mean, going for Rangers is good, but if his opponents were more on the, you know, on the prowl for anti-infantry measures, if they would have built more, um, more good infantry squads, more versatile tanks that can deal with infantry as well as armor, rather than just kind of leaving the Allies' uh, vehicle superiority, and these Rangers would have been very expensive to maintain because they can't really do anything against vehicles and once vehicles come in and start to really do a lot of damage to them they're pretty expensive to reinforce. I think it's like, oh, you're not, you're not the HQ, that's unfortunate. But they should, it's 400 manpower, 40 I think, yeah, I think Maybe 40, maybe something else. They're expensive. Uh, you don't want to lose Rangers. And they're not as versatile as Riflemen because, again, they don't have any anti-vehicle capabilities. So, And also, they can't place mines. So, getting a couple of Riflemen instead of a third Ranger squad would have been a good idea. And maybe rebuilding, once he gets so much manpower, maybe rebuilding his officers. Uh, he actually never went for the lieutenant. But... Um, yeah, rebuilding the captain would have been a good idea, just to get that extra bazooka. He also, I mean, he played well with the support weapons. He had those mortars up in the early game, and that was very, very good. It allowed him to at least slow down the entrenchment of the central part of the map by those MGs and those mortars. And the anti-tank guns did come through in the end and were pretty useful for him. But overall, the Jacksons were just a disaster. Uh already the Sherman, even though it got a f sort of favorable trade against the Panzer IV, one for one, that's okay, considering the, P the Panzer IV is more expensive. The Pershing, even then, would have been better. Once you go get to that 13 CPs, like, the main reason you get the Heavy Cavalry Company is for that Pershing. It's such a versatile unit, it's such a strong combatant, you want that on your side. It, it just kind of does everything that you want, and it's not even that expensive. So, go for Pershings, uh, save your infantry, and, you know, always maintain at least a couple of mainline troops like riflemen. Rangers may be good, but they're not, you know, they're not... Wow, that's a stare and a half. Yeah, I feel like I need to end, end on that note. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope this guy does not come and kill me in my sleep. I'll see you soon.